Greetings to you all in Jesus name. Things are shaking over here. Praise God. I want to talk about a Bible verse that the Lord opened up. Uh, in my heart this morning and began to just show me some things and gave me some understanding. And here I am to share this information with you. Let's go to Proverbs chapter 16, verse 9, where the KJV reads as follows. A man's heart deviseth his way, but the Lord directeth his steps. A man's heart deviseth his way, but the Lord directs his steps. A man's heart. Let's break this, let's break this scripture down word for word and uh, just stir things up a little bit so that we can paint a vivid picture of what the Bible is conveying here. A man's heart. What is a man's heart what is the heart what does the heart do what is the function of the heart when we begin to dig into the word that was used here there's a certain sets of definitions that apply to the context the word heart is talking about the inner man the inner being it's talking about the reflections of life the memories of life. When we're considering the heart, the concept of the heart, it's talking about the seat of emotions. It's talking about the seat of desires and passions. It's talking about the network of memories and emotions, the network of concepts and ideas that are intertwined with the emotional response that was recorded. It's talking about life. It's talking about your experiences. A man's heart deviseth his way. A man's heart is responsible to devise his way. We're, so the, the scripture talks about a direction, a man's way, the Lord directing the steps. We're talking about going somewhere, going from one place to another place and the journey that takes us there. A man's heart deviseth his way but the Lord directs the steps. So it looks like that the heart is the foundation, that the heart is the place of reference that begins to devise the way to go. We can see this example clearly in Abraham, Genesis chapter 12. I have it pulled up here somewhere. Oh, no, I don't. Genesis chapter 12, beginning with verse 1. Um, if you've been following the videos that I've done here lately, you may be familiar with this story and this highlight right here. In verse 1, this is where God calls Abraham. The Bible says, Now the Lord said, the Lord had said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country, and from thy kindred, and from thy father's house, unto a land that I will show thee. Remove yourself from where you are and go to a place I'm going to show you. Point A, point B. In between is the journey. So God never gave Abraham directions, as we've discussed before. He never said, listen, I want you to go to this place. I want you to go to Canaan. I want you to go to Panoram. I want you to go to Haminadab. I want you to go to Pendulumium. I made that up. It sounded pretty good, though. I want you to go from here, from where you are, specifically to there. That didn't happen. God simply said, get up and go to a place that I'm going to show you. So Abraham was left to devise his own way. He had to figure out or determine where he was going to go. He knew, I have to get up and go. I need to go somewhere. So the Bible says a man's heart deviseth his way. A man's seat of his emotions, the emotional makeup, the emotional imprint, the network of concepts and ideas and experiences that a man has had in conjunction with the emotional responses, the emotional reactions, the emotional 
imprints, the emotional progressions. A man will devise his way. I'm going to find my way based on what I've learned, based on my experiences, based on what I believe. I'm going to devise my way to get to where I'm going based on what I think is, is good, based on what I think is right. A man's heart deviseth his way. There's a way that you can go that your heart devises. When God calls you to get up and to move and he doesn't give you specific directions as to where you go, the only thing you have is for your heart to devise your way. Abraham's heart devised his way. But the Bible says that the Lord will direct the steps. Abraham went towards Canaan. The Bible says in the verse four, so Abram departed. God said, get up and go. So Abram departed as the Lord had spoken. And Lot went with him and Abram was 75 years old when he departed out of Haran. He left Haran at the age of 75. And Abram took his wife and his his brother's son, Lot, and all their substance and everything that they had gathered, they left Haran and he went forth into the land of Canaan. And into the land of Canaan they came. So Abram already had a destination in mind. God said, get up from where you are and go to a land I'm going to show you. Simply get up and move. Remove yourself from where you are. Get out of your comfort zone. Get out of the place of familiarity. Get out of the place where you know everybody. Get from the place to where you've got everything established and set up. Get from the place to where you've got everything figured out. Remove yourself from that place and go to a place that I'm going to show you. Go to a place. Step into a place of uncertainty. Step into a place of the unknown. Remove yourself from the known and step into the place of the unknown. I'm going to meet you in the unknown and I'm going to show you where to go. But I'm not going to show you where to go in your place of familiarity. I'm not going to show you where to go from the place of your comfort zone. I'm not going to show you where I want to take you to in the place to where you're already established. What I need from you is to come up out of your comfort zone, to come out of the place where you've established your yourself and step into a place of uncertainty. And I will meet you in the place of uncertainty. I will meet you in the place of the unknown. And I'm going to take you to the place that I'm going to show you. This is what's happening here in Abraham's life. How many times have you felt God calling you out of a place of familiarity? How many times have you felt God calling you out from a place where you're already established, out from a place where you're, you're familiar with your routine? You know what happens. You know that if you get on the interstate at seven o'clock, you're going to hit traffic. If you want to avoid traffic, you got to get there by 635. You already know that if you get to Chick-fil-A, by 1 p.m. they're going to be packed. You already know the routine of your surroundings. You know the ebb and flow of your city. You're familiar with your situations and you're comfortable. And God has called you to step out of that into a place of uncertainty, into a place to where you don't know the routine, into a place to where you're not familiar with your surroundings. You don't have a solid understanding of the functions of the things that are going on around you. God is saying to Abraham, come into that place. And from that place, I'm going to meet you there and take you to the destination. But God left it up to Abraham to get him into the place of uncertainty. It's funny how the place of the unknown is unknown. We don't know where that place is, but the Bible is saying that a man's heart will devise his way. Your heart is going to take you to the place of the unknown eventually in your walk with God. That's where you're going to meet him. So this is what happened. A man's heart deviseth his way. That word devise, it means to form in the mind by new combinations or applications of ideas or principles. 
The word devise means to invent, to conceive, to imagine, to plan, to obtain or bring about, to plot. To devise means to plot, to plan, to strategize, to conceive, to bring about. So when the Bible says that a man's heart deviseth his way, a man's heart, the seat of his emotions, the seat of his passions, the seat of his desires, the mind will take these things and devise and construct a way and construct a path, a projected place. The mind will take the things of the heart and formulate a way. That's what we're seeing in the scripture here. Think of the mind as being the paintbrush and your heart as being the paint. The emotions are the color. The passions, the desires are the color, the mind, the will, the volition, the ability to choose and think logically is the brush. Let the brush of your mind meet the paint of your heart to devise and construct a plan that you can follow into the place of uncertainty after God's calling you. A man's heart deviseth his way, but the Lord directs his step. This brings to mind an experience. I, um, I was going to a destination. I was going to school. The school was the destination. And uh, I knew how to get there. And there's two ways. I live on a peninsula. And the school is on the south side. Is on another body. Of, is, is on another land mass. And there's only two, way, two main ways to get there from where I am, and that's two bridges. One is the Hampton Roads Bridge Tunnel. The uh, other one is the Monitor Merrimack Tunnel. So normally I would go the HRBT, Hampton's Ro Hampton Roads Bridge Tunnel. So in going to school, I have set about the way that I'm going to take. I'm going to get to where I'm going by way of the HRBT. But I came to the place to where the interstate split up and there was a fork in the road. I could either continue straight on Interstate 64 by way of the Hampton Roads Bridge Tunnel, or I could branch off Interstate 664 by way of the Monitor Merrimack. Now, the Bible says that a man's heart deviseth his way, but the Lord directs his steps. My heart devised the way to go through the Hampton Roads Bridge Tunnel. But when I got to the junction, it, the, the projected forecast told me that there was traffic. And I didn't want to, uh, I didn't want to be in the traffic. I didn't want to be delayed in my way. The way that I was taken would have delayed me in my arrival at the destination. So the Lord detoured me. He ordered my steps. He directed my way to go to the Monitor Merrimack, Interstate 664. That was not the plan. My plan. My device was to go this way, and in moving in this way, God directed my steps to go the way he wanted me to go, and I got there in an appropriate amount of time that was acceptable to me. How many times have we endeavored to go in a place to where God has called us to go, and we're trying to get there following our way, which is what the scripture says. A man's heart devises his way, but the Lord directs his steps. So you follow in your way. You walk in what you know until God directs you. Don't fight the shifting of God. We can't lean on our own understanding. At this point, when God is trying to shift us, we have to be pliable enough to move with the spirit to shift as the spirit is shifting us to walk in the direction that God is guiding us. The Bible says that the Lord directs his steps. There's another word direct. It means to establish. Abraham was established from where he was. He was established in Haran. He was comfortable. He was set up. But the Bible says that God will direct his steps. That word direct, it means to establish. God will establish your place. God will set you up. God will bring stability. God will bring you to a fixed place, a place that's already been determined. He will direct your steps. 
to get there. The Bible says that the word of God is a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. That word path can also be defined as way. The word of God is a lamp to my feet. It sheds light in the steps that I take. The word of God illuminates the steps that I take. When God speaks, his direction illuminates the steps that I take. It illuminates the way that I go. The word of God tells me when to shift from my understanding, when to shift from my way and to change and switch over to his direction. If I'm going forward, when God calls me, I'm going into the place of unknown and uncertainty. At the moment that God meets me there, he will shift my steps and order me to go his way. Abraham stepped into the place of uncertainty. He stepped into the land of Canaan and from Canaan, God met him there and redirected his steps into Egypt. God ordered his steps into Egypt. Abraham's way, Abraham's heart devised his way into the land of Canaan and heading into Canaan, God shifted and redirected his steps into Egypt. Abraham wasn't intending to go to Egypt. He was intending to go out to meet God in the place of uncertainty. And when Abraham got there, the Lord shifted his direction. The Lord shifted his steps into Egypt. His purpose wasn't to go to Egypt, but God had a pit stop in Egypt for him. Had Abraham rejected that, and God has a way of guiding you. God knew Abraham was chilling in the land of Canaan. He obeyed. He said, God told him, come out from where you are and go to a place I'm going to show you. So Abraham came out. He's dwelling in Canaan. And the famine comes. The famine directs his steps to Egypt. Sometimes inconveniences happen in our life. Sometimes trials come. Sometimes famines come. Sometimes you don't have enough money to pay your bills and you got to go somewhere that you didn't plan on going to get the resources that you needed. It's the Lord directing your steps. Sometimes things come up missing, things come up short, or you have a lack, or there's a need that comes up, or you feel shifted because God has stepped in and directed your steps. God has moved you to where he wanted you to be. And God does that the same way. Let the word of God be a lamp to your feet and a light to your path. Let God direct your steps. Let God order your steps. Let every move be orchestrated according to the already established plan of God. When you come to a place of uncertainty, when you come to the place of the unknown, walk in it. The psalmist put it this way, yeah, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, the shadow is a place of darkness, a place of uncertainty, a place of the unknown. You can't tell what's in the darkness. You can't tell what's lurking in the shadows of your valley. That's why you need the word of God to be a lamp to your feet and a light to your path to illuminate your immediate steps so that you can see what the next step is. It's the word of God. Let it illuminate your steps. The Bible says that a man's heart deviseth his way. Well, what would happen if you have Jesus in your heart? If your heart is so full of Jesus, what if your mind that deviseth, that, that deviseth the way is so filled with Jesus that you are in, you, in, in tune and in union with God, that your heart filled with God begins to devise a way, a way that's not painful, a way that's not extra. What if this is what Paul talked about? I press toward the mark of the prize of the high calling. What if it's, what if this is the highway? What if we can get so full of Jesus in our hearts that when we go to make plans for the way that we take, we automatically take the highway.
We don't take the low way of our carnal understanding. We don't take the low way of the carnal mind, but we take the high way of the spiritual approach because our heart is so filled with the love of God, so filled with the essence of God that we automatically walk the high way. There's a difference. Let our hearts be so filled with Jesus. Let our hearts be so filled with God that we formulate the plans of where we go so in tune with God that we are walking a high way. The scripture says, God speaking, my ways are higher than your ways. Ad, move Holy Ghost, move Spirit of God. God, I bless your people right now. Father, let the anointing come upon them in the name of Jesus. Let the anointing begin to move upon their hearts, Lord. I pray that you would draw upon their heartstrings, Lord. God, let them dance to the tune of your spirit on their heartstrings into the place that you've destined your people to be. I feel the Holy Ghost. Be blessed in the name of Jesus. Let Jesus be in your heart so that when you devise your way, you are constructing a highway to the place of destination and not a low way. That's where we want to be, ideally. I hope that this word blesses you. I hope that this ministers to your soul. I pray that you get clarity and direction. Father, I release a spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of this word so that it can become a lamp to the feet of your people and a light to their path, directing them and ordering every step that's taken by them. Let them not be distracted. Let them not be deterred in Jesus name. I pray for covering and safety that carries them along the journey until they reach their place of destination, the land of promise. God bless you all. Peace be with you.